I'll be really, uh, be really, really quick. We've got 10 minutes to talk about a topic I'm really passionate about. And uh, we've seen lots of fantastic talks today uh, talking about you know, thought-provoking ideas. And what I'm going to talk about is something that th thankfully is very, very rare. And so I don't want anyone in the audience to be frightened that any of these medical conditions will happen to you. But the reassuring thing is that if it, if it ever does to you or to one of your family members, you can see how this new technology that we've had for the last 10 plus years uh, is really saving lives and uh, protecting people's brains from uh, damage. This is just the opening slide. This is my little friend here. I'm going to call him Henry. Uh, we're going to see him a few times uh, through, the, uh, through the presentation. And uh, what we're going to be talking about is uh, the impact of technology on our lives and how in the health sphere, how that technology has really come to, uh, come to the forefront. So all these technologies that we've heard about today uh, make a huge impact on our lives. And uh, when we look at computer power, that's been really in a lot of spheres of uh, life, be education uh, and certainly medicine and other technology areas, computer power is really what's made the difference. And when we look at the early computers in the 50s and 60s uh, that put the man on the moon, for example, you look at the iPhone that's in your pocket and it's literally more than a million times faster, more powerful than that computer which put a person on the moon back in 1969. So, if we look at these computers back then, they were big, they were as big as a Hummer. Uh, imagine having that in your bedroom at home. This here, uh, this is Siri, uh, this is what she looks like uh, for people who've never seen her, and uh, <laughs> she's trying to uh, answer some of those difficult questions you've got. And this is, of course, my favourite thing, the iPhone, and uh, a lot of people have smartphones, and it's remarkable that technology that we have in our back pocket, and we use virtually every day. So what I'm going to talk about is what goes wrong in the brain, particularly the blood vessels of the brain. And like I said, it's extremely rare, so it won't happen to anyone here. And I'm going to talk about two different scenarios. One is a brain aneurysm, and I'll explain what that is. And the other is a stroke. So if you have a stroke, what does that mean, and how can we fix that for you? So here's Henry. He's been at the hairdresser all day getting ready for the TSF formal tonight. He's looking sharp. <laughs> And if you have a look here, there's this blump, this uh, blister on his blood vessel. This is an aneurysm, okay? So it's a weakening of a blood vessel. What can an aneurysm do? Well, it can bleed, it can rupture. And if it ruptures, it's a serious, life-threatening condition. Luckily, we've got ways that we can treat it. So you can treat it with surgery, opening up the head and putting clips on the aneurysm, which is a really, really good treatment. Or we can use other techniques where we can uh, repair the aneurysm on the inside of Henry's brain. So how do we do it? Using technology like CT scanners and MRIs, we can get pictures of your body, all the blood vessels in your body, and then we can actually navigate on the inside of these blood vessels up into the brain without actually having to open up your brain. And there's a little uh, tube that you can see here which uh, navigates up from the leg in most cases. We can go from the arm and we can get right up into the brain. So let's see how uh, Henry goes. And these are the little coils that we put in. We've got about 400 different shapes and sizes of coils which we can put in this aneurysm that we want to block off and we want to make sure that it doesn't bleed and cause a brain hemorrhage. So here's Henry's aneurysm and uh, here we are navigating a special tube into the aneurysm. And then we put one of those coils, uh, as you can see here. And we're using really powerful computers which, like a GPS, can navigate our way on the inside of those blood vessels to repair it. So what next happens is those uh, around the coils, the blood clots off, and then eventually we can remove that special tube from the leg, and as you can see, the aneurysm itself is, is occluded. There's other aneurysms where, instead of using coils, we use special devices called stents, and this is just a little uh, flow model which is from the States, which is just showing in, in real terms how we uh, deploy these stents, and you can see the aneurysm at the top, and we're putting in two uh, stents here, you can see, uh, and we can see this all on the computer when we're navigating inside the person's brain. So someone said earlier it's really nice to touch people's hearts, but we get to work in people's brains, which is also a really big honour. As you can see here, we've navigated into the aneurysm, and there's those coils that uh, we showed you before. Like I said, they're all precisely sized to the problem that we're going to be fixing. And by blocking off that aneurysm, we're stopping it bleeding and causing any problem to the patient. Here's Henry again. What's he got this time? Uh, We'll have a look at it. He's got a different sort of aneurysm this time. And in the last five years, we've had this new special type of stent called a pipeline stent. And you'll see on the cartoon here the stent being deployed within the normal artery next to the aneurysm. And then over the next few weeks, we don't need to use any uh, coils in these particular aneurysms. You can actually see the aneurysm shrinks down. And that stent forms a scaffold which allows the artery to heal. And now Henry doesn't have a, uh, an aneurysm. 
So I've talked about aneurysms, and uh, there's a lot to say about aneurysms, but I've only got 10 minutes. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is stroke. What's Henry got this time? So instead of an aneurysm, he's got a blood clot, which is actually blocking off one of the blood vessels in his brain. As we watch the cartoon, you can see this is a little animation which really shows how we navigate on the inside of the blood vessels. You can see it. It's very tortuous sometimes, and you can clearly see there's a blood clot. Instead of an aneurysm, a weakening in the blood vessel wall, we've now got a blood clot in the blood vessel. Now, that's not a good thing, because those blood vessels are meant to be taking fresh blood to the brain, keeping the brain alive and keeping you thinking and being able to move your body. So people who have a stroke often get some weakness on one side of their body, or they can't talk, or they've got some weakness on their face. So the important thing is that clot's got to be removed, and it's got to be removed really quickly, because if it's left there for a long period of time, and when I say a long period of time, every minute, different parts of the brain are dying from that blood clot. And if it can't be removed, then the person has a really big stroke, and they're often permanently disabled. So what do we do? Uh, we navigate our way up with a special wire. Again, this is all from the leg, just like fixing those aneurysms. And we put a special little uh, tube called a microcatheter. These little tubes are about a millimetre in diameter. And again, like I said, with the computers we use, we can see it. And we can see the clot, we can see the normal blood vessel. And then once we've got that tube in place, we then bring a special device. In this case, this is called a solitaire, which is one of the best devices you can use now. And what it actually does is when we remove that, it opens up and it grabs the clot. And it helps get the blood flow going again, gets the brain getting that blood supply that it's been missing out on while the clot's been there. And then the last thing we do is we then pull that clot out, pull the way out, out of the patient's leg. He's frightened of blood. Nah. And the last slide, this is what it looks like. So really small. You can see that little blood clot there. So that little blood clot literally might be a centimetre in size, half a centimetre in size, can literally change somebody's life if it's in the wrong part of their body, in that wrong part of the brain. So look, that's all I've got time for. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we've seen this lovely rail link, and, and we're at the end of the road of this talk, and we've talked about aneurysms, we've talked about strokes. Thankfully, they're very, very rare, but it's very reassuring to know that we've got the technology now to fix these things for you. So as a proud father of St Hilda's, thank you for the invitation, and I uh, hope you have a fantastic night tonight, girls.